Hi, this is B from Sorcery Soap, and today I'm going to show you how I bevel my soaps and give you some insights to what's going on over here. Okay, thanks. Okay, here I had an idea as I was taking care of these soaps today, and um, I wanted to show you some of the equipment that I use. So this is the soap finished. This is Temptation Fragrance Oil by Nurture Soap and Pink Vibrance, also Mica by Nurture Soap. Gold shimmer on the top. No, this is not a Nurture Soap commercial. It is part of my new commitment this year to only purchase things from suppliers that will consistently carry them and to demonstrate soaps or fragrance oils that behave properly. And when I say properly, I mean even discoloration I can deal with. Acceleration can't. I don't care if it's my favorite fragrance oil in the whole world. I'm not going to deal with it. But because the quality of the bar of soap is more important than me supporting the supplier and, you know, showing off their fragrance oil, even though I like the scent. So I'm done with that. That's my new commitment. I'm just completely done. So one of the things that happens, and I'm going to see if hopefully you'll be able to see this. There's like an orange peel effect on the top of this bar. And obviously the corners are very sharp. And so... I bevel the whole thing and I plane it and any minute my better half might be walking in the door so I'm trying to get this video done before he gets home he went to the post office so he could send all your orders out today okay so this is a beveler and this beveler is pretty heavy-duty plastic you can get them pretty much anywhere I preferred the plastic one I haven't used the, the one with the razor blade in it but knowing me it seems like a bad idea to use razor blade when I'm doing things I like not to think too much about. Anyway, so here's the soap. I made this on um, the 4th of, what day is it? Yeah, the 4th of this month, so it's about 10 days old. And so I'm gonna plane the sides and bevel the edges. Okay, here we go. Hopefully you can see that because my camera situation is pretty janky today. Oops. And I'll show you how much it takes off. It doesn't take off much at all, but it makes it nice and smooth. So that's about how much it takes off, which is pretty thin. It's not that much. I think it's worth it. And then it doesn't always catch on, on the other side. So that's why I do both sides. Let's see, and then you gotta be careful for your embellishments. They do come off sometimes, but they can be restuck. So there's that, and then I use this. So this is a zester, and I don't even know why I had it, because I don't zest anything ever. But um, I think I was looking for a potato peeler one day to bevel the edges, and couldn't find it, but I did find this. So this is what it looks like. It comes off like systematically nice and clean. And then the knife is for this, to, and I get little peels on it. The best way, um, I use a, a silk in my soap, so it also helps to give this nice flat and like shiny finish. And see, it's pretty even. I don't think anybody else is going to be as picky as me about this, but I like it not to have a sharp edge to it. And then I just take a wet t-shirt cloth because, and I say t-shirt because I have these other cloths that I use for soap, but they're too rough, they'll, they'll make grooves in it. So a t-shirt and get my fingerprints and all soap crumbs off like this. See that little soap crumb there is stuck. We don't want that. So there you go. And also, it'll help take a little soda ash off if you happen to be doing that too. So get my fingerprints off like this. There we go. So that's the one thing I wanted to show you that I thought was important and I just happened to stumble on it. If it helps, it helps. If not, that's cool too. The other thing I wanted to show you is just in the last couple of years, these are all the soaps I've made. I know it's not, it's kind of crazy. I make a lot of soap, but um, I couldn't for the longest time. So this is how long I've been doing this. This is each year. 
one, two, three, four. Now, nah, I've been doing it longer than that, but these are four years that I have here. I think I have another box of them. Anyway, this is just this year, how many soaps I made. And the reason that I do this is because I'll make like a bunch of different soaps in one day and I can't remember from one to the next what fragrance or, or what colorant I used. And so I write it down here. And then if I really wanna duplicate it for each particular thing, I'll write it more permanently in my book. But this is what I do, I write it down here. Just as a quick reference, like this is Ode Wood and um, this is a sorting hat soap and I ended up having six bars at four and a half ounces. This I made on January 27th. I used cabaret and cantaloupe and magic mushroom. So that helps a lot, the all by nurture soap, of course, but that helps a lot. And that, that leads me to my second thing. So what I do is I make a soap and I write all my details down and then I tape this to wherever my soap is. And then while I'm curing, cause I don't know about you guys, but I can't remember all this for eight weeks. I won't even try. So I tape this so then I can also see the date. So when I'm, when I need to, um, I can offer it online. So I know exactly how long it's been curing for and what details and everything that goes along with that. I'm sorry if I'm moving the camera, it's a little bit, my setup today is a little bit janky. But the other thing I wanted to say is that I'm only, my new commitment for fragrance oils is I'm only using fragrance oils from suppliers that keep the fragrance oil all year round, unless it's a seasonal, very specifically like, I don't know, gingerbread or peppermint something or other. Because I've been, uh, I've been lured in by the idea of here, use these fragrance oils, but when your customers love them and you want to come back to buy them, I'm not going to keep them. And you hear, I'm gonna throw something else at you. Oh, I'm not gonna play that anymore. That's ridiculous. And I can't possibly make even my clients happy with a fragrance oil that is only gonna be here for a short amount of time. What am I supposed to do? Buy a gallon or something I don't even know if I like yet? So it takes months to come up with a fragrance oil for your soap line. At least it does for me because I wanna see how it behaves and then I wanna see how other people like it. I wanna see if I like it in six or eight weeks. I wanna see if I'm interested in going back to it or if I'm even curious about it again. And then I buy, you know, maybe what, four ounces and all that takes four ounces by the time I'm ready to buy it again to restock because maybe now after sending out hundreds of samples and sending out soaps and doing all this stuff, my people that follow me like the scent and so now I'm, I'm supposed to go, you know, I go to restock it and it's gone. I'm not gonna do that anymore. I'm completely done with that. So the other thing I'm doing is blending fragrance oils, which is so much fun. And that goes into a whole nother concept. So I'm not, that gives me an opportunity to have fragrance oils that you can find with me that'll be consistent throughout because I plan on being here for another six years at least. I've been around for six years and some of like the dragon silk, scent of a dragon I used to call it, it's a forest scent. It's wonderfully green and sort of, there's some odd smokiness to it, even though I don't put a smoke particular fragrance oil in it. And that company has been around for all this time. And they've had the same fragrance oils and they've added a couple new ones, but they have the same fragrance oils that they had six years ago. And that makes me very happy. So anyway, that's my new commitment. And I hope this beveling cleaning soaps helped you. And if you have any more questions or if you have any questions, let me know and I'd be happy to try and help you. But personally, I like to feel a, a bar of soap that's really smooth on all sides. So thanks again for watching and like and subscribe if you want. I don't really care because this is a demonetized channel. But if you want to go and support us over at Library TV, that'd be awesome too. So, okay, thanks. Bye.